guys, today I'm going to go over how to install the uh, Holley VR2 pump. So this is the fuel pump from Holley. Uh, the part number that we have here is the 12-3000. Uh, this pump is going to be used in a uh, street car that uh, it's on E85 and gasoline. So we're incorporating an existing booster pump just to increase uh, voltage to the pump. But the pump comes with two controllers. And this is really where the majority of my focus is going to be for installation, that and how to program it in Holly, how to activate them and whatnot. So the pump comes with two controllers, two uh, wiring harnesses. So these literally just plug right in. Red is power, black is ground, yellow is the signal to turn the pump from, it's a ground signal from your ECU, and it turns the pump from 50% duty cycle to 100% duty cycle, so it's actually quite simple. You don't have to send a tack output signal or anything like that, uh, just a ground signal. So we're going to use two outputs from the dominator to trigger these yellow wires to turn the pump from 50% to 100%. So um, we've already got the pump mounted. Uh, a friend of mine this is a friend of mine's car, and <clears throat> the pump is already mounted. And on the back side of the pump, as you can see, there's two uh, Deutsch DTP uh, four connectors hanging off of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to terminate up underneath the car here. Uh, that you know we'll plug the, the connectors in, but right here it is, and they plug into the leads coming off of here. It's about as easy as it gets for a big fuel pump uh, for installation. So, a couple things that I wanted to go over for plumbing. You have to use ORB fittings. Okay, so these are uh, these are 12 AN or 16 AN ORB fittings. It's really important. They actually are larger inside diameter than. Don't thread an NPT fitting in there. Don't do, you know, a uh, make sure that your fittings aren't stepped in the wrong direction. Uh, make them smaller than they're supposed to be because this pump flows a lot of fuel this car uh this car very pretty car it's a uh this is a uh, small block ford uh blue thunder headed deal twins and uh there's the holly regulator this part right now we're uh we're doing a, a new installation on on holly and i'm going to do a couple other videos with this car on how to set a couple other things up like flex fuel and whatnot but you have to run the regulator with the fuel pump. The fuel pump flows, when it's at 18 volts, it flows right at like six gallons, six and a half gallons per minute, I believe it is. So the, the regulator has to move a good bit of fuel through the return port. So we had to swap out the old regulator that was on there for the new one. Uh, it was a simple deal. We just had to modify the bracket a little bit. So there's the, uh, there's the regulator. It's plumbed from a, a feed line right here you can kind of see it down there and then it feeds the front of the rails and then it returns off the back side of the rails back here and then feeds into the regulator here and the returns on the bottom so the return goes back to the tank this car uh, is very streetable this thing was built to just drive around town and uh cruise and race and if you look this has a uh, I believe this is like a stock, this is a stock gas tank that's got a sump in it. So what we're doing is we're feeding from the sump into a pre-filter, okay, and then through the pump, and out of the pump into a, uh, it's, it's not facing outward, but it's a Holly 460 gallon per hour uh, post filter. It's 10 micron stainless. This car is 93 in the 85. Uh, and then the return from that regulator, you can kind of see it up there, but it's up there. Um, it goes, you know, right back into the sump. So the pump's already mounted, made a plate for it. Um, well, he made a plate for it and it bolts right on. It's, it's actually rather compact for how much uh, fuel it flows. So there's two separate pumps in here. Okay, so you can kind of see it in the body. And that's why there's two separate controllers. So they're they're both obviously brushless. But the what we're gonna what we're gonna do in this application is we're just gonna run both pumps at 50% duty cycle while he's cruising around. And then once we reach X uh, TPS or X map, and I'll show you that when we go to the software setup portion of it, uh, we are going to 
activate those ground outputs from the ECU and those are going to turn the pump controllers up to 100% duty cycle and make the pump run 100%. So uh, I just wanted to show you before we bolted this little plate we made in here. There's my own car. Um, before we bolt this little plate in here, kind of how it, how it works. So these plug right in to this connector here that it comes with and we are feeding it power from the smart wire. This car has a race pack smart wire in it. And uh, so we're not going to be, uh, we, we don't, uh, typically what you would do is this has a rear mounted battery. So you would use a relay and you trigger the relay from the A2 pin off of the uh, ECU, your typical fuel pump relay, the little green wire, the loose, loose wire on the main harness. And uh, you would run that back to your relay that's gonna power both of these controllers, which in turn will power the pump. In our application, we are going to be running power into the boost pump, get voltage up to like 16, uh, and increase uh, flow from the pump. These pumps are good for, uh, I believe, 18 and a half uh, volts. And instructions are great. A couple different ways of uh, how to plumb it. And we are, we're plumbed. I don't have our way of plumbing it, but whatever. Uh, Basically what we have going on here is it comes in here and then it Ys right here and it feeds both of the rails and then it comes off of both of the back of the rails and it comes back to the regulator and then this is the return. So anyway, uh, we're going to bolt this pump in or bolt our controllers in and uh, get everything fired up and then I'll show you all how it, how it works on how to activate it from 50 to 100%. So be right back. All right, we got the uh, pump and the controllers and everything all mounted up in the car. So now it's time to program some outputs to activate uh, both pumps independently to go from 50% duty cycle to 100% duty cycle. So we're in our uh, global folder here. And uh, what we're going to do is go to the uh, input output ICF. If you don't already have this in your uh, global folder, what you do is go to toolbox, add individual config. And then here you'll find a long list of them. Go to I slash O and grab one. Um, typically you just go uh, base config blank, so all of them are blank. Now we go to outputs right here, and we have to configure two separate outputs, right? So I just labeled them for ride. Um, so we've got their ground output, so you change the type to ground and enable them. And this first one, the way this works is you have to hold ground onto that wire until you want to activate it to 100% duty cycle. So what that means is the output will have to activate when, and in this instance we're using uh, TPS, this output will activate when TPS is below 49% and it will deactivate at 50%. So at 50% throttle it's going to let the pump, the pump one, because there's two pumps inside of, this, inside of the VR2, it's going to let pump one run at 100% once we reach 50% um, TPS. So as you put your foot to the floor and you increase to 50% TPS, or below 50% TPS, the pump is going to run at 50% duty cycle. And then once you cross that threshold of 50%, it's going to turn pump one onto 100% duty cycle. And then we do the same thing for fuel pump two. But in this instance, we're using 75% uh, TPS. So uh, it's, it's, you need to hold a ground on that wire until you want it to run at 100% duty cycle. So we just use TPS for this application. Uh, this is what the guy wanted to do. And uh, it works well because if you're over 75% TPS, you probably need a little bit more fuel anyway. So uh, you can use plenty of other things. You know, you can do it off based off of injector pulse with if you wanted to, or closed loop compensation, wh whatever you wanted. But this is the easiest way. It's also very easy to test in the garage. So you just go over 50 or 75 percent TPS, and boom, it turns it on to 100 percent duty cycle on the pump. So very simple, self, uh, very very simple, um, straightforward installation. Uh, this pump is extremely quiet. Uh, we pulled out um, two, 
or no, I don't know, I think we pulled out one uh, Aeromotive Pro Eliminator pump that was substantially louder than this thing. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll run back out to the shop and I'll grab some video of this pump running here in a second. But this pump is extremely quiet uh, and flows a ton of fuel. So, uh, one minute, we'll go out to the garage and we'll snap some video of it. All right, so here's the car that has the uh, VR2 pump we just installed, we just programmed it, and uh, I'm going to show you what we came up with for mounting. So there's our two controllers, there's the booster pump. The booster pump's not needed, it's just he already had it. And um, this car, at the moment, it does not have a rear seat delete in it, so I'm going to videotape how loud this pump is from the driver's seat you know when my garage is very quiet so you'll be able to tell how quiet this pump actually is so uh, this seems to be a pretty uh, important thing for a lot of people I know I get annoyed driving down the road with an electric fuel pump that's really loud so uh, what we're gonna do here is this has got a smart wire in it as well so I'm gonna turn the fuel pump on so this is both pumps running at 50% duty cycle Hopefully you can hear that. So there's the pumps, they're running. This is from the driver's seat. All right now, let me try to bear with me here. So there's the controller, it's running. Now I'm gonna, act, I'm gonna activate the uh, first pump to go to 100% duty cycle at 50% TPS and then the second one at 75 so there's the first there's both so you can hear it stage you know three different sounds so um, there it is this, uh, this pump rocks. I'm a really big fan of this. The, there's another pump out there that's quite a bit louder. It doesn't flow as much. Um, it works as well, but uh, for his intended purposes and driving this thing all over the place and you know, uh, putting the grandkids in it and whatnot to cruise around, he didn't want something loud and annoying. So this is where we're at. This pump uh, works great. I'm happy with it and hopefully this walked you through how to uh how to put it in the car and how to set it all up so have a good one guys